This video is an outreach of Unity Christian Church, 3500 West Hill Road, Flint, Michigan. I am Brenda Etheridge, pastor and teacher. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, the mission of Unity Christian Church is to lead people to Jesus Christ and to encourage one another on our faith journey. Bible readings are from the New Revised Standard Version, and commentary is from the Abingdon Preacher's Annual and Feasting on the Word. Editing and music from the public domain by George Etheridge. Our subject today is Bread for the World. Our scripture reading is Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And it reads, Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dog. She said, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus, Jesus answered her. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that moment. Thanks be unto God for the reading and the hearing of God's word. Let us pray. God of all that is precious and good in our lives, we pray that in these moments, you will come to us in a new and powerful way. Set us free from all that would keep us from dwelling in peace and harmony with our brothers and our sisters. Empower us through worship to become the men, the women, the boys, the girls, the people who have the strength to live every day in faith and obedience. It is through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Hear these words from the Reverend Donald Williams Dodderter, a Methodist minister, preacher, teacher, and author. In Garrison Killier's best-selling book about the mystical town of Lake Wobegon, there's a chapter entitled simply Protestant. In it, the narrator tells of his years as a boy growing up in that small community. He said that in that town, where everyone was either a Lutheran or a Catholic, his family was neither. They were sanctified brethren, a church so small that nobody but the members and God knew about it. When the other kids asked what religion he was, he just said he was Protestant. Being a member of the sanctified brethren was too much to explain. It was sort of like having six toes. You'd rather not 
take your shoes off. The boy from Lake Wobegon discovered early in life that folks who call themselves Christians are not all the same, that they in fact may do things differently. Christians are all divided up into Catholics and Protestants, and then the Protestants are further separated into Lutherans and Methodists and Disciples of Christ and Baptists and a host of other well-known denominations. How often we forget that despite our denominational labels, Despite our nationalities, we who have faith are all equal in the eyes of God. God's grace revealed to us in Jesus Christ is open to all who are willing to call him Lord in faith and in love. As Paul reminds us, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There's no longer slave or free. There's no longer male or female for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Divisions among religious people who believe in the same savior are not limited to life in the centuries past, or even in the century present. Our gospel lesson for today concerns that extraordinary encounter between Jesus and a person who is known to their tradition as a Canaanite woman. We read that Jesus had just left Galilee and moved north, crossing the boundary from Israel and entering into a foreign territory populated by non-Jews. Some translations call this woman Phoenician. New Testament scholars have never known quite what to do with this verbal exchange between Jesus and this woman. This mother was obviously aware of Jesus's reputation as a healer, and she cried to him for help in cleansing her daughter of a vicious demon, saying, have mercy on me. Lord, son of David, we're told by Matthew that Jesus paused in silence as if to consider what he must do. On the other hand, his disciples didn't hesitate a moment. They simply demanded that Jesus send this foreign woman away. After all, what right did she have to ask for healing from the one who had come to save the people of Israel? Their comment reveals an attitude of radical superiority, a problem that we still have in the 21st century. 2,100 years later, Jesus, perhaps at this point, struggles with his own identity as the Jewish Messiah. He, but he answered softly, saying that he had been sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Mark's version of this story makes the issue a little bit clearer for us, telling us that Jesus said, the children of Israel must be fed first. 
But this woman was persistent. She demanded that Jesus take her seriously and be in relationship with her. Again, she said to Jesus, Lord, help me. Jesus then gave a response that constitutes one of the most difficult and perplexing sayings in scripture. He said, it's not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dog. Now, dogs was a derogatory term often applied to Gentiles by the Jews. Jesus took, a, took the bite out of the insult by using a, a, a form of the Greek word uh, that meant, well, puppies. He was quite possibly quoting an old Jewish proverb. But once again, the woman was persistent in her request. We can imagine her kneeling before Jesus, looking him straight in the eye, her voice touched with the motherly concern for her daughter as she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the dog eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus, apparently overwhelmed by the woman's trust and confidence in his power, responded, woman, Great is your faith. Great is your faith. The child was then healed instantly. Jesus had shared bread with this foreign woman. As in the case of the healing of the Roman centurion slave in Matthew 8, a Gentile's trust and confidence had compelled Jesus to widen his ministry and mission to persons who were considered outsiders. It's also interesting to note that the girl seemed to have been healed from a distance, which also seems to have been the case in the healing of the centurion slave. This is testimony to the confidence that these Gentiles had in Jesus' healing and saving power. How great indeed was the faith of this woman and this man who were outside of Jesus' cultural, religious Sometimes. It does take an outsider to see the truth, which is invisible to those on the inside. Civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. in his famous letter from Birmingham jail responded to criticisms of prominent uh, Birmingham, Alabama clergy who charged that he was an outside agitator who was stirring up trouble away from his own community. He wrote these words from his city jail cell. I am cognizant of the relatedness of all communities and states. I can't sit idly in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham? Injustice anywhere is a threat to injustice. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of death. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. 
so it is that we rob ourselves of insight and relationship when we begin to draw lines between us to label people as insiders and outsiders, nationals and foreigners, the most important aspect of the story of this Canaanite woman for people of all generations is the way in which Jesus was able, both personally and spiritually, to overcome cultural prejudices in order to minister to the woman, not as a Canaanite, but as a human being. Since Jesus was able to break through those cultural and religious barriers and create a new basis for unity, should we, as his disciples, disciples of Christ, not attempt to do likewise? But how difficult it is for us to accept all persons as equals. We allow differences in religion, skin color, nationality, even personal income to separate us from other people who have been created by God to be fellow citizens on this earth. Like these disciples, because of deep rooted prejudices, we fail to see people as people, identifying them only as persons who are unlike us. And also like the disciples, we may miss opportunities for ministry and relationship because deeply ingrained prejudices leave us unable to think on our own. The American playwright, Arthur Miller, visited the black townships outside of Cape Town, South Africa. He encountered a concrete wall hiding from view the shanty towns from the public. Miller said of South African white minority, there's a sense that simply their eyes stop seeing. That's what we do when we allow ourselves to be divided from other people who we do not know and therefore can't understand how many of us condemn whole groups of people without even having had a relationship with even one person from that group. When we see poverty and suffering on our streets and in our neighborhoods, we may look, but we don't see simply because those people are not like us. When we do this, we're like the disciples who only see a woman of a different culture or ethnic group coming to Jesus, disturbing their little circle of accepted persons. What they did not see was a mother whose little girl was being ravaged by what must have been a terrible illness. An important aspect of genuine faith is the ability to look and really see all people as human beings. The story of Jesus and the Canaanite woman is a preview of the whole history of, of Christianity. 
and opening the covenant with Israel to all the people of the world. Jesus offers forgiveness and salvation to all who call him Lord. This is where Jesus first made it known that he is the bread for all the world, not just the Jewish people. Let us then praise God that Jesus Christ is bread for all the world and that through him we can overcome our differences with others and learn to live together in peace and harmony. Let our prayer this day be that we may live together in the unity of the Spirit, which makes us one with Christ. My brothers and sisters, Believe the good news of God's abounding love in Jesus Christ. By confessing faith in Christ and being baptized into his church, we are given new life. Through faith and baptism, we receive life in the spirit. We invite you to confess before people your acceptance of Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Commit yourself to his ways through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Oh God of all that is and all that ever will be, we come to you in prayer, seeking healing in our lives. We confess that we have been people who have not always accepted others as our equals. We have ranked persons above and below us, forgetting that in your eyes, the eyes of our creator, we are all loved and accepted without any worldly distinction. We have denied other people relationships with us simply because they are different in one way or another. We pray that you will bring us together so that people from every culture and every nation may live in peace and harmony. Take from us any fear and distrust that we have for one another. Grant us eyes to see all people as human beings created and loved by you. You, the one God who is creator and sustainer of all living things. We pray for all those throughout the world who struggle for justice in a cruel and unjust world. Strengthen your laborers of faith with righteousness as we labor against prejudice and injustice, both near and far. May we become of one mind and one spirit as we confront evil wherever it's found. Lord, make us instruments of your peace in this troubled world. Oh God, hear now the prayers of your people this day. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. 
help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, and rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of us. Amen.